<laughs> Running through the matchups, and we'll start with Oklahoma and Ohio State. Bear, so the Buckeyes are a touchdown favor, favorite right now? Yeah, it's, it's seven or seven and a half, depending on uh, what, what, what book you look at. And I, I struggle a little bit with this game, but I think the, the, the fact that J.K. Dobbins is so dynamic on that offense, I think he's a difference maker in the game. I trust him to make plays against an, uh, against an Oklahoma defense that big injury in the secondary. I think Ohio State at home at night. I don't think Oklahoma will find big plays as easy to come by against the, uh, the Silver Bullets and that Buckeye defense that they did in the opening week. Uh, I, it won't be as bad as last year's game, but I do think Ohio State ultimately will, will win by double digits. Baron, you watched that D-line a week ago, too. And is there – I don't see a better now defensive line from a depth standpoint and talent standpoint than Ohio State. Steve, Steve and I were talking actually about that earlier on the podcast, and we thought Clemson might be the only one. Yep. I don't know. That, that, that would probably be – but, yeah, you saw in the second half, once they figured Indiana out, Indiana had no shots, and their wide receivers didn't stop making one-handed catches. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see if Oklahoma and, they, and their skill players can get anything going. I feel like this is a setup where we're just supposed to talk and then Pollock's just going to yell at us because we don't watch as much tape as him. <laughs> hey, I'm wait hey, Stanford, I'm waiting for it. Just put your foot in your mouth once, baby. I'm coming. You know that. Oh, man. I'm here, man. I, I actually like the other side of this game. I think Oklahoma could keep it close. I think this is a huge spot for head coach Lincoln Riley, knowing what's at stake. Uh, knowing how passionate the Oklahoma fan base is, knowing how they got embarrassed on their home field last year. I think him and Baker Mayfield come in with an airtight game plan, and I think they keep it close. I think it's a close game. I think they cover the number of seven and a half, and I, I think it's a close game in the fourth quarter. So for a little background, can All we right, tell us Obviously, I think they're going to keep it close, too. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll keep it kind of close. How close Thanks, is it going to be, Des? We got a good one? We got a good one, Des? For, for a I think we have a good one, especially going into the fourth quarter. You got Baker Mayfield, man. He's a guy who can put pressure on the defense because he can throw it and run it too. So watch out. He's a he's a what they call a, a Heisman hopeful, just like J T. Barrett. <laughs> Probably with more a laugh, so than by Barrett. the way. What they call yeah, a Heisman right. hopeful. You familiar with that? Heisman All right. What about yeah, Alabama though? Them. It's a battle. It's a battle. Bear, a huge hopefuls, favorite. But, Talk me through the Alabama game. Where are we at there with, this with is the tie a, right This now? is a system play for those in the industry. <laughs> you look at, at – What does that mean, Barry? Some of us don't know what that means. I'm going to lay it out for you right here, Dave. Follow along, everybody. System play. What does that mean? Follow along. Six times under Nick Saban. Go ahead. Six times under Nick Saban at Alabama. Alabama has covered against a Power 5 team in the opener, then faced a Group of 5 team in the second week of the year. The six previous times – they haven't covered any of those games. So what that tells you is they get ready for the big game early in the season, make their statement, use the, use the following week as a little bit of a breather, rest some players, work on some things. So we're not looking for, we're not looking for the Ted Heads to score a lot of points. Give me one touchdown, 45-7, cover the 43 and a half. 